The game that has journeyed its way into thousands of homes since 1981 when it came out is Sequence. And in this video, we're going to go through the top strategies for winning Sequence, including their pros and cons and when to use these strategies. But let's go ahead and dive in with the first strategy and that's regarding your first placement. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at my hand, which you saw me just deal to myself quite randomly. And And I'm gonna lay them out here so it's easy for the camera to see. So I've got a wild two eye jack, awesome. And I've got three spades, two hearts, and let's look at them, identify them on the board. So three of spades here, and there's two of each kind, so there's three of spades here and here. There's a six of spades, there's one here and one here. And then there's a nine of spades here and here, a nine of hearts here and here the queen of hearts here here so of those cards your first placement isn't going to really it's not going to make or break your game but it will make it a lot easier for you and what I recommend is if you have cards that are touching each other or corresponding closely then place one of those cards first so for example I've got the six and nine six and nine also six and nine. If I were to choose between these two, these are, are within a line and can be used as together in one sequence. So my first turn would probably be the six of spades and place the token. The pro of this strategy is it really focuses you from the beginning to start working on one location and start working on a sequence right away. That way, if you get down the road, you have multiple opportunities because of the first cards that you played. The strategy, when to use a strategy, obviously your very first placement, but throughout the game, if you find yourself that you're no longer getting pieces that are right, if they're right next to each other, then you can play that piece right next to one that's by another. And this will just keep you focused throughout the game to give you the most opportunities to get sequences as much as possible. Okay, segment placement. So this next part of the strategy is to stay within one part of the board. As you can see, the board is divided into fourths already for us, so we don't even have to use our imagination. And if you stay within one segment of the board, you're more likely to get sequences within that. In comparison to if you didn't use this strategy, you may like use a strategy where you've got cards over here and cards over here, it really spreads your resources out and limits the opportunities that you can make. The con of this strategy, there isn't really a con, but say you have all these cards and none of them are worth are within the segment that you've selected for your gameplay, try and do one that's adjacent, so one that's to the side of it, not diagonally, because diagonally you have, it's a lot harder for you to take advantage of the card, of the pieces being here. Now if you're in the middle though, and you your first few pieces are right here, and you've got one over here, it's totally fine. You can make your segment in the middle. I just recommend the easiest for people to see is usually this four sectors, but you can also do a sector in the middle as well. Really great if you have the cards for that because you'll have opportunities out the wazoo and won't have walls, but you won't be able to use corners like you would if you were in a corner segment. Now let's talk about using wild cards. As you can see, I drew a one or two eye jack and a one eye jack. As a reminder, on the side of these boards, tell you what that is. A two eye jack are wild, so you can place a token anywhere you want using that card. And then the one eye jack you could take one away from another player's sequence as long as that sequence isn't com completed. For the two-eyed jack, I'd recommend holding on to this until you are one away from your sequence. You really don't want to place one down in hopes that you're going to play this next one because someone else might come in and take it. The only exception to that reason of doing waiting to the very last Second is if you really have some sort of reason to believe that another player is going to play that. For example, but if I get this one and still need one more, wait out and hold on to the jack in hopes that I get a six of spades or a nine of spades. But if you really feel like, oh no, green is definitely going for that nine of spades, you can play the card for that to get the nine of spades if you feel like that's necessary. But if you can, just hold on to it because that opens the opportunity 
If you place the jack down on that nine of spades, the problem is now your only opportunity is the six of spades, whereas if you held off, you could have gotten the nine of spades or six of spades drawing it and then use that for your jack. So just something to consider. For the one-eyed jack, a lot of times people use this as a defensive mechanism and they see this person has four, so they wanna take away one of them and they'll play their one-eyed jack. You can do that, but you have no idea what cards the other player has. And so it's pretty risky. You may just be wasting your one-eyed jack. Instead, if they have a piece that is in your way or preventing you from opportunities, you might want to take away that piece. And that way you have the opportunity to do that nine or six of spades plus use this free space here. Another reason you might want to use a jack or another scenario is if you have cards in a bunch of different directions and seeing getting rid of this piece right here opens up your ability to do a diagonal here as well as a horizontal here. So that could open up more opportunities for you and is probably a better use of that jack, one-eyed jack. The pros of this is it focuses what you're doing with your jack so you don't waste it. You don't want to think that you know what the other players are doing and waste your jacks on it. And it also helps you so that you get the most opportunities you can to get addition the first sequence and second sequence, depending on how many people are playing. Cons for this though is because of that, you're probably not going to have any blocking. You're probably not going to be blocking during the game. And so that defensive mechanism that you can use jacks for will be removed if you use this strategy. When to use this? This is later in the game or you're finding that you just have a couple of spaces left that you would take advantage of these. So hold on to them in your hands until you're ready to take advantage of them. This next strategy I call opening opportunities and essentially that's when you have, there isn't like a particularly great play for you to do. Or looking at your tokens, you play a piece based on what will open up the most opportunities for you. For example, if you you have, with the current layout, you have a possible vertical line here, horizontal line here, horizontal line here, and diagonal here. Now if you added a piece here, for example, that would open up another diagonal for you and increase your, your strength with this horizontal as well as opening up another diagonal for you here. So just keep that in mind as an option for you to use your moves to build opportunities and you know maybe your next turn you get a five of hearts and a seven of hearts and it wouldn't have mattered unless you had placed this three of clubs down. So as a quick overview of everything that we just went through, we did the first placement where you should do your first placement based on what cards you draw. Trying to stay in segments so that you have the most opportunities for you. When to use your jacks and making sure that you're focusing on your own game when you use them and giving you yourself the chance to make the sequences and other opportunities for you in the game. And then we also looked at opening opportunities based on each placement. So looking at what placement will give you the most opportunities and then playing that token. I hope this video was helpful and that you win your next game in sequence. If you do find it helpful, please give us a thumbs up. And if you have any recommendations for strategies that people should play with sequence, please include them in the comments below. And please subscribe to my channel. I do lots of videos like this, strategies, how to's, occasional reviews about board games and card games. And I think you'll really enjoy it. So be sure to subscribe and press the bell notification so you can get notified as well. Thanks again for watching this video and enjoy playing sequence.